Oliver Dooley, K6OLI, will present an overview of the Winlink Global Radio Email System. Oliver is a member of the Winlink Development Team and a coordinator of the Did You Feel It project. He is also District Emergency Coordinator for Ares LAX. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you so much. So tonight we're going to do an overview. And then if you have technical questions, we'll do that in the Q&A. Just to get you a sense what it is, what it does, and how it can help you and your families and your communities. That's what this is all about. So without further ado, let me share my screen. And if there are questions, please feel free to stop me. And we can certainly, we can certainly address that. All right. Again, thank you so much for, for having me. And again, uh, by extension, um, the Winlink group, and of course, all the many people who've done phenomenal work um, with the development of Winlink. It's an extremely powerful tool. At its most basic thing, what it is, it's email over radio. And we'll talk a little bit about how to do that. But there really, if anybody asks, what is Winlink? It's email over radio. And the powerful thing is you can do it over VHF, UHF. You can do it over HF. You can do it over mesh. You can do it over the internet. Today, I'll do the live demonstration over the internet, but I also have, if you want to, we can uh, show you a, a video where I actually digip through a local gateway to an HF gateway, which then forwards the information out. But we'll get to that in a little bit. All right. Resources, always start with the resources, right? There is a lot of information. You can go to the Winlink website at winlink.org. You can get the client software there and I can make um, all that information available. Um, for you uh, as well. Plus there's a whole lot of information written on that on willing.org in the book of knowledge, um, the how to's and so on. And there's a fantastic group out there on Google groups, which has pretty much all the settings you need for your radios. Um, and if you have a specific radio that doesn't have settings there, I always use the search function there. Um, if you have a specific radio that doesn't, you can ask and somebody will probably jump in and help you there. So that's on, on Google groups and I can give you that information afterwards too. So I would highly suggest if you have questions to do that, Marty Wall who, who lives in in, um, in in your area, he and I, we had a conversation he, he dug out an old 857 and he wanted to get that um, up and running on Winlink. And I don't have that radio, but I went onto the group. I looked up the settings, I sent it to them. 10 minutes later, I get a Winlink message from him via HF. Um, that said, hey, work perfectly, thank you. And you know, that's how quickly it can go. We find that people have a lot of HF experience. It's very easy for them to start thinking about, well, I can add that to my arsenal. I can add that to my um, repertoire. In SoCal, the standard, and I'm not saying it's the only way of doing it, but the most common way of doing Winlink right now is using software modems with Packet and Vara FM. On HF, it would be Vara um, HF and to a lesser extent, RDOP. And there are reasons for that, and we can go into the details a little bit later. Um, if you've got the uh, petty cash lying around, uh, $1,700, you can buy a, a Pactor modem. Well, some of you may already have Pactor modems, so you can get a, a P4 Pactor modem. The thing is, you can only use it up to P3 in the US, um, but during emergencies, P4 is usually allowed by the FCC by special dispensation. And we'll talk about that later. All right, here's the groups link to the Winlink Programs Group. Great people, if you have questions, um, try to be specific when you have a problem, describe what's going on or use the search function. Most of the time the, the, the question has been answered there. So I found that super helpful. And if you've never done Winlink before and you say, I just want to learn how to use it, how to feel comfortable with it, here's a shout out. And that's why I was so super excited about Dan and R60 being here. The SoCal Winlink training classes are a unique feature of Southern California. And a big shout out to David W0DHG, David KK6DA, and Ben NR6V, who take the time to actually do classes. They're usually four to five hours. They hold one on Friday, one on Sunday. So if you want to, you can do a double whammy, but it's the same class essentially, depending. And they walk you through in a very supportive, helpful atmosphere, any question is okay, you know, you can feel comfortable. And people come out on the other end, know how to use Winlink. They walk you through this um, on Packet, on Vara, and you feel really comfortable afterwards. So I can only highly recommend that. They do this for free. They do it as a service to the community. They recently um, trained people from Canada who are now taking this concept to Canada. 
Um, and I can't say enough about them. So please, um, these are the resources available. They're local to you. Um, they're doing this on Zoom. So you can follow along, you can try it out live. It's a lot of hands-on. And Dan, are you okay with publishing your, your email? Maybe pop it in chat later so people can reach out to you. So I highly recommend these. Yeah, I'll do that. All right, so why one link for Aries LAX? That's the main question, right? Well, this is a typical resource request. And this is what is in what is called a crash card. Um, if we have some medical personnel there, you can take a look at this. How many of you would feel really comfortable sending this on voice and make sure that's 100% correct? Okay, how many of you would think that it takes an awful long time to actually um, use ITU phonetics with a butyrol oral inhalation solution, 2.5 milligrams? Qu quick show of hands. Okay, does that sound like fun to you? No. Is there a high likelihood that there might be a problem with, uh, with anything coming across and error rates if you do it on anything but digital? Yes. And again, um, usually you have, uh, uh, I have a couple of very similar sounding things. I mean, here, ceph cephasolin, cephalexin. I'm sure they do different things, but I don't feel comfortable sending that. And so one of the things that we looked at early on was what can we do? And we looked at FLDG. And we looked at Winlink and we did FL Digi. We still do FL Digi quite a bit. But one of the things we ran into during our regular nets, we have a digital net every week, is that FL Digi sometimes drops, in spite of the fact that you get a good um, checksum, drops data, and that's unacceptable. Winlink, on the other hand, uses ARQ, automated resend request, right? So you either get the message 100% or not at all. If you don't get it at all, you can find a different path. That gives you something to work with. So that's why we settled on Winlink. The other advantage of Winlink, as we found out, as we're diving deeper and deeper, that was the core problem Aries LAX was trying to solve. But the other problem we were trying to solve is how do we let our families know we're okay, right? And one of the things Winlink does really well is it interfaces with the internet. It interfaces, you can send, um, emails to cell phones, you can have, you can have, and I'll show you some of these cool things. You can email relatives all over the world and that's really powerful. And there are several layers of backup. So that's the reason why we are using Winlink and we use it quite a lot. You get the accuracy, there's the error correction I mentioned, you get the speed. If you use it on mesh, it's internet speeds, right? Packet generally is about five kilobytes per minute if you think about it that way. Vara FM is 30 kilobytes to 80 kilobytes per minute. And just to give you an idea, um, the average Word document Excel spreadsheet is around 30 kilobytes if it's not um, thousands of entries, right? So 30 kilobytes, sending that in a minute is pretty good. On packet, it would take six minutes if you have a good um, connection. So think about that way as well. It's being economical with your frequencies, making sure you add circuit capacity. And that's what it does, sending the same data faster, right? And then of course you get mesh where you do really high speeds and you've got um, VARA HF and RDOP VARA HF tends to be around 15 to 20 kilobytes per minute. RDOP is slower. Um, so it just, it's one of those things and it also doesn't connect as well. If that's what you want to use, by all means, but VARA HF is a good option there. And of course you got Winlink forms. They make it a lot smaller and we'll show you some of these forms later. Um, they tend to be one kilobytes to four kilobytes. So they're really small, they go fast, even on HF connections that may not be optimal, you can still push the traffic through. We just send spreadsheets, CSVs, comma separated value um, files, one kilobyte to five kilobytes and Excel sheets can be anywhere between 10 and 100 kilobytes. So this is typical, um, but you can see what we're thinking about when we're doing the traffic in voice, we do need something like this. All right, there are a couple of ways that you can send Winlink messages. Um, at the base here, are we the operators? Most people think of Winlink as a purely gateway driven system, but that's not really how it works only. Gateways are an important part of it, but what if everything else has failed? What if none of the gateways operation can you still send Winlink messages? And the answer is yes. You can send them in a mode that's called peer-to-peer. -peer. So one station can connect to another station, provided they use the same mode, they can send messages directly and exchange them. In fact, our Thursday night digital nets tend to be peer-to-peer -peer nets. And you've got a net control and the other stations call into net control and send it. And because they're VHF nets in our case, 
we have the voice net control on the same frequency, which makes it super efficient. So you got the tactical and the logistical traffic on one. Peer-to-peer, -peer, no gateways, and that's our fallback. If all else fails, peer-to-peer -peer is still available. The next level up is gateway. You have an operator here on the left, and she's sending a message to the operator here on the right. And what she does is she sends it to a post office, if you will, uh, or also referred to as a gateway. And the technical term for that is a radio mail server, right? And that's, in this case, um, then I will start thinking with your, uh, that's a German expression, right? I'll, I'll start bragging with your gateway. Um, Dan's gateway NR6V-10 is an RMS gateway. It's a radio mail server. And the gateway can talk to other gateways, right? It can do that via the internet, or if there's an HF connection, it can do it via HF, it can do it via mesh connection, or the two of them can connect through the same gateway, right? That works. If everybody in San Fernando Valley connects to NR6V-10, you can all put your messages on there. Even if you don't want the messages to go out, it's still there even without internet, you can use that post office. But if you have several gateways and they're connected by internet, let's say, it can go from RMS1 to RMS2 and the other station can pick it up. The advantage of that is you can actually use multiple modes to do the sending and pickup. So operator one here can send VARA FM and operator two can pick it up on packet if they wanted to. Or if the gateway has HF, they could pick it up on tactile, right? Oops, wrong direction. Uh -huh. All right. And if you have internet available at these gateways, what happens is that the RMS connects to what is called the common message server, the CMS. And that now lives in the Amazon cloud. It used to be five servers globally, um, which connected were connected by internet, but it's now all happening in the cloud. There's one backup server in San Diego. If the cloud disappears, the messages will be routed through there. But obviously, um, a lot has to happen for the Amazon cloud to go down. And that has really um, also helped harden the system. Let me point this out again. Even if the internet is gone, the system will still work. And we can talk a little bit about, if you're later, if you're, if you're interested, we can talk a little bit about hybrid gateways and so on. But by and large, this is how it works. Gateways are post offices. You can deposit messages there. If there's an internet, they forward it and people can pick it up anywhere in the world. You can send to any internet um, address or any phone number um, that, you, that you can access. Any email address is essentially fair game. And that's also a big difference from let's say FLDG. FLDG is ham to ham only. You can't get outside of the system. But with Winlink, you can go outside of the system. More importantly, people can come inside the system, right? They can send back to you. All right, here are the North American VARA HF gateways. You can see that quite a lot of them, um, if they have a little H, that means they're hybrid gateways. That means they can forward information. They have multiple ways of doing that. And they're very, very powerful um, machines. In the Southland, we're very lucky. We actually have two of them. There's AJ7C. Um, in Culver City, which is a very powerful, beautiful station. If you ever want to invite Kevin for a talk, he gives a fantastic Winlink talk. And of course, there's ORF, um, W6BI, who now has a very powerful hybrid station over in Ventura County. And those are stations that you can connect to, yeah. send messages, and they will make sure that your message gets out. And if the next HF station doesn't have internet, it'll keep forwarding until one of the stations they're connected to actually has internet and from there the message will go out. The system is extremely smart. Yeah. Here are the so uh, packet gateways. Uh, you can see it's very much a, a East Coast thing. There are lots of gateways on the West Coast, essentially in the, in, in the highly urbanized areas. Um, in SoCal, what you have here on the right, um, the packet gateways in the heart of San Fernando. Let me, let me be honest with you. Um, San Fernando Valley for the longest time was a little bit of a willing desert, but NR6V, you know, Dan and David W0DHG have actually turned um, San Fernando Valley into an oasis for Winlink. So because Dan has such a fantastic location, everybody can kind of connect all over the San Fernando Valley to the system. So 
keep that in mind. It's an extremely powerful station. Um, you can see there's a lot of um, gateways here in the Pasadena area. That's just where Aries LAX is located. The H here, that's the Culver City, AJ7C, that's Kevin's um, station, and a couple um, up north. But these are the packet gateways. The packet frequency in the Southland is 145050. And when we started um, putting VARA together, we got the sysops together and kind of agreed to start using 145030 for, for VARA. Packet and VARA do not coexist well. Um, packet essentially does time slots and VARA is linear. So the two of them should not be on the same frequency. Um, we can talk about that later as well. All right, how does Aries LAX use WinLink? In our case, we think about it in terms of network flow because we need to move traffic if you have a number of hospitals, right? We want to get everybody involved. So that means technicians, general, extra, everybody should be involved. So let's say you've got Tom at White Memorial Hospital and he uses VARA FM. And you've got Robert at Verdugo Hospital, he uses Arden Mesh. And then you've got Lynn at Pomona Hospital, he wants to use Packet. Well, they can all connect to, let's say Jeff, who's at the um, Medical Alert Center or MAC as we call it, which is the EOC for the hospitals in LA County. And Jeff is usually set up to handle traffic from all these different ways. And he has an HF station there, so he can reach out of the area or even do some NVIS, um, depending on how the setup works out. And from there, he can either, if the traffic is from the hospital to the MAC, he can actually send uh, give the information to the MAC, or if he needs to, and this is what's happening in the first 72 hours because all disasters initially are local, right? For the first three days. This is our way of operating at first, but eventually we will have to start looking for help on the outside. Well, we have those options. We can connect to gateways either locally at the Mac or use different gateways to connect to them. And we can forward the information with VARA HF, with PACTO, with ARDA, out of the area to gateways in San Francisco. We've got good relationships there. And you know, we're, we work with Arizona, Nevada, Hawaii. You can actually use those gateways and actually get the information out from where it can go to the internet and then can go to Cal OES or FEMA or USGS, depending on what the traffic it is. So it's a very, very powerful system. One of the questions I get very often from, from uh, people who do a lot of HF is, well, wouldn't it be easier to go HF, like for everybody. We tried that. And the problem there is not all HF stations are created equal. So what you have are some HF stations that take a lot longer. And it actually, we find it's actually easier to aggregate all the traffic at one point. And that point then has a really good connection, captures the next HF gateway. And it just sends all the traffic in bulk. It's much easier on the systems. And don't forget, most digital modes go 80 to 100% duty cycle. So we want to be mindful of our equipment as well, especially if we are in an emergency situation. Blowing out equipment may be fun when the HRO is just down the road. But if it's a couple of days off, maybe not the best idea. Plus, you know, it's less chaotic when we do it that way. That's our experience, you know, um, your mileage may, uh, may vary. Basics, how do you do this? All right, there are a couple of devices you can use to do this. Um, signal links, a lot of people have signal links. If you have one, you're good to go. There's an enormous amount of debate on the red um, transformers versus the black transformers. I think it's a little bit off the beaten path. Um, if you have a signal link, you're good to go. Essentially hook it up to your radio make that work and it works with VAR FM, Packet, VAR HF, RDOP, NBeams, you know, what have you, and it has really wide capability. Does it sometimes have a tough time with 9600 if you want that? Yes, but 9600 and VAR FM wide is only twice the speed of VAR FM narrow. So would I lose sleep over this? No, in practice, it makes very little difference. So. It's best for people who are field operators and who people want to have interoperability. So if you have a signaling, you're good to go. Uh, the other one that's really popular is DRA and RIM boards. Um, they support VARA FM white and packet. Um, N beams, you can make it work, but uh, you know, FL Digi, but it is a pain to make that work. Um, you have to go on kinds of fun programming. If you're really geeky, by all means, have at it. Um, I think. Best um, RIM boards and DRA boards for master's communications are best for gateways or if you're VARA um, 
uh, if you're a Winlink power user, Vara FM power user, um, by all means, go for that. We have um, some of them on our gateways. They, they work really well as long as you don't move a whole lot. In the field, I have found making adjustments is a little more complicated than it need be as far as I'm concerned. Um, again, I've got three of them. They work really well. We attach them to gateways. They work fantastic. But keep in mind what your use case is. Sound cards built into your rigs. You can use it with ICOM or Yesu. You know, so I'll say a moment, I'll say something about the Yesu FT991A. Um, but if you have an ICOM rig, a 7100, 7300, what was the other one, 7610, um, they have fantastic sound cards built in. You're essentially good to go. Um, they do VARA FM, usually narrow, wide, they have a tough time with. Um, packet, VARA HF, RDOP, NBeams, you don't need to bring a signal link, you don't, you can just use the sound card inside, switch to digital mode, usually we program the channels next to one another, and you just switch back and forth, works brilliantly well, it's really easy. If you want to use it with several applications at the same time, we recommend you get a virtual serial port emulator which creates a virtual serial port so you can actually share um, your COM ports, right? Um, and we can talk about that if, you, if you're interested later. Um, but with the Yesu FT991A, it's a beautiful rig. It's a great field rig. It has a great sound card built in. But let me tell you, um, if you're doing only digital, it's fine. If you're doing only voice, it's fine. If you're mixing the two, it becomes very tedious very quickly. We have six of them in our group and every single one of them um, went back to using a signal link because they just plug and play in the back and they're, they're great. There's nothing wrong with a sound card. It's just more convenient because for those of you who are uh, Yesu aficionados, you will admit the menu structure, and I have a Yesu rig as well, but the menu st uh, structure is, you know, it's one of those things you got to work your way through, but here you go. So for field operators, we highly recommend if you're into MCOM and IC7100, it's beautiful. If you do a lot of HF, the 7300, you cannot beat that. And it's the whole package in there. With a decent antenna, you don't even need a tuner um, on the 7300. So, all right. If you have a TNC um, lying around, you can most definitely use that. A Cantronics, they're fantastic, set it and forget it um, devices, but they do pack it. They cannot do VAR FM because they're not sound cards. The items here in green are all sound cards. The TNCs are packets that have a packet uh, that, <laughs> sorry, they do packet really well. They're TNCs, they do whatever you want them to do with packet extremely well. Set them up on gateways, you set them up for gaming, you don't have to worry about it. They're extremely high quality, but no VAR FM. Just keep that in mind. Does it work? Absolutely. And they give you additional features like BBS and mailboxes, et cetera. So just keep that in mind, but you can't do VARA, you can't do WinWare, you can't do Ardo, et cetera. All right, so what do you need to set it up? You need a computer and the computer then uses WinLink on it and WinLink logs into the modem, VARA FM, and VARA then modulates the information and your signal link set, uh, turns that into sounds and sends it out via the radio. And on the other side, it works in the reverse. The signal and picks up the, the signal, goes into VAR FM, which demodulates, then sends it to WinLink, and you're good to go. You got your message, right? Works super easy. And I just put in a, a HF rig that works the same on VHF, UHF, and HF. UC7HO, you could also use Direwolf um, as a soft modem, is a fantastic solution. It's free. Um, the guy is. Uh, is in Ukraine, is great program, is fun to work with. It's fantastic. Software TNCs are about 30% faster than hardware TNCs. So keep that in mind. A lot of people look at uh, some of the presentations we do, like, wow, this went fast. And then, yes, but that's, they are faster. That's just the way it works, especially if you have the audio level set right. And then, of course, you still can use endings if that's something that you or your group do, by all means. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Couple of use cases. What do we do with this kind of stuff? Well, we do a lot of exercises. On the top left, you see one of the exercises we, we did together with DCS in our in our area it was super successful. We had WinLink messages going back and forth. It was really productive. We did on, on the bottom left there, Monterey Park had a CERT exercise and they invited us in and we set up a mesh network for them. And we sent WinLink messages via the mesh because picture files tend to be very large. 
probably don't want to send to send picture files over HF, but on mesh, it's relatively easy. So we sent picture files, the uh, certs went out there and took pictures and sent that to the EOC and it made, you know, the city manager is super happy. Uh, I'm sure some of you are working Baker to Vegas and may recognize this is Chicago Valley there with Tron K6NHI, my better half on the left and Nancy K8, K8NBD of alert on the right. And we set up, we use WinLink there to actually stay in touch with our families. It's a safety feature there. Um, I tend to send messages to my sister in, in Pennsylvania, who is my out of state contact and email messages to my family in Europe. So um, in the field and uh, using HF uh, makes it super easy. You can get out, you can get these relatively small messages out and they can send back and say, hey, good to hear that you're safe and you're having fun out there. And then of course, at the bottom there is one of our recent exercises, which kind of copies the statewide medical health exercise. And that picture was taken at the Mac and that's David W0DHG. Those of you who want to take the training will definitely meet him. And Jeff W2JCL on the left. And they set up everything. It was funny because the EMS agency said, we can give you shore power. And Jeff said, no, 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 no. We want to practice exactly the way we're running it. So everything is run there off of batteries and we feed it with solar panels and it's all highly mobile. So keep that in mind. And they set up um, in that small area there, they set up VHF, UHF, they set up mesh and they set up HF. And it was really great. Um, they worked really well. And so fantastic. And then on the right hand side is one of our dearest projects. That's the, did you feel it? And the image that you see here, the map you see here is actually um, the shakeout we did in 2020. And every dot there represents one or several amateur radio operators. We approached USGS and we said, well, would it be useful to you if amateur radio operators could send, did you feel it messages out of an area where you can't get that data? otherwise. And they said that would actually be extremely helpful. So we worked together with them. It's a different presentation, but that we worked together with them. And within six weeks, um, thanks to the WinLink development team, especially Greg, KG6 um, SJT, and Vince Kitoriano, the programmer from USGS, um, they put the program together. They put the website together. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, and they actually enabled us as I'm at your radio operation, by that I don't mean me, I mean all of us, that means you, that means everybody out there to actually send, did you feel it reports out of an area? And this is where the donut hole comes in. One of the biggest problems after an earthquake or any major disaster is you don't get any data from the hardest hit areas. And that's actually Dr. David Walt who coined the phrase donut hole. You start getting data from outside the donut hole when infrastructure still works, but not where it's most needed. And for those of you who remember the Whittier Narrows earthquake, one of the things that happened there is LA City radios were still working and they were calling for help. And so the Whittier um, Fire Department was listening to this, oh wow, they looked outside, it looks pretty bad here, must be even worse there. So they up and left but they couldn't get any information from Whittier itself, which was the hardest hit area because none of the phones were working. It was just, and that's where the policy comes from to actually open the doors, move the um, fire engines outside and so on. But this is one of those things that, that um, happens. So having information when nobody else can send information, it's extremely powerful. And as amateur radio operators, we have a lot of options to send this. As I said earlier, we can send this via network. You can send it directly via HF. And um, I gave a, did you feel it presentation to Ventura County has been very active in, in did you feel it? And one of their operators said, well, how useful is it? I'm the only person sending it. I said, well, if you're the hardest hit area and they have one report, a reliable report from amateur radio operator whose name is on this. That's a lot of good data they can go on. And they really only need about 20, 30 reports to make a valid inference on the shaking, on the intensity of the earthquake at that point. Just a quick show of hands. How many of you have um, experienced the, um, have experienced the Northridge earthquake? Okay, so <laughs> pretty much everybody, all right. How many of you have experienced the San Fernando earthquake? Because that was, we just had the 50, okay, so, all right. Um, and you probably thought, well, 
might have been nice to actually get some data out after, you know, <laughs> just and this is one of those things where you can actually do something. And here's the other thing. It gives us something to focus on. We recently had a earthquake, a 4.0 earthquake. And I have to say within about half an hour, about 20 of these did you feel it reports were sent by amateur radio operators in the middle of the night. They set up, people who didn't have set up, set up and they sent it out. This is how much it's part of the training now. So it's really great to actually, USGS really likes this because they look at amateur radio operators as very reliable in terms of the information they can get. All right, the other project we have is the SoCal VARA FM Audubon, which, is, which came out of the thing that it, I found it frustrating that we couldn't really help our friends in Ventura County during the Thomas fire and all the other fires. So what we've done here is we've kind of networked the gateways and you can actually from all the way west in Ventura County can um, reach all the way east with one or two hops. Um, and actually the, there are three HF gateways here. So you can actually get information outside to these HF gateways. And when the next fires come, at least they know they have a path out and we can be reliable partners for them and vice versa. They're, they're happy to be reliable partners for us. All right, additional fee features. Um, there's a web mail feature, so you can look at your messages online. Not sure. Um, I do that just to check whether I have messages. And there's a radio message viewer. So please keep in mind that all traffic you send on WinLink in the US is more or less public. You have to have a call center to actually look at it but it's essentially public knowledge. So don't send anything you don't want other people to read, right? That's one of those things. And in our case, we very often don't send real phone numbers for hospitals and so on, because that's just not safe. Messages are stored on the server for 21 days and then they're deleted, right? But everybody can read it. And there's APRS integration. So if you send a position report on WinLink, it'll automatically be fed into APRS so people can see that. Great if you have family outside of the area. All right, using WinLink. Oh, so far, any questions? It's a lot to cover. So if I go too fast or if there's anything that, all right. So this is Winlink Express. If you download it, this is the, the face, you, you, this is what you're faced with. Uh, first thing you do is you go to settings and you um, set it up and it's pretty straightforward. You put in your name. You don't have to pay for it. It'll just give you a nag screen and the nag screen disappears for like um, after about 10 seconds. So don't, don't worry about that. If you want to donate, I think it's $28 last time I checked. It's well spent money. If you're a power user, you definitely want to spend the 28 bucks and get rid of the nag screen. And it helps support the development of WinLink. There are a lot of volunteers doing this. All right, let's go through the different parts here. Those of you who remember Outlook in the old days, um, this is pretty much the same thing. Um, this is a message window. So you can see your message here. You can see the message ID, you can see the date and time it was sent, who the sender was and who the recipient is, right? Then you have a message preview. You can kind of see what the, what the message is all about. You have the message actions on top. On the left here is if you want to start a new message, it's right here on the left. If you want to reply to a message, you can click on that. There's a reply all, you can acknowledge messages. Um, you can forward messages. And this one is a really important one for Aries LAX. It's forward without change. So you can lock the message down. That was something that LA County um, requested because they're really um, worried that people might insert data into, um, into messages being forwarded. So we actually talked with the Winlink development team and they really locked it down. Now you can actually initiate messages and lock them down. Great feature position reports and a couple of other things here. You can print messages, really great stuff. You have different folders, inbox, red, um, red items, outbox. You can create your own personal folders. So it's very convenient. And of course it's got the session selector and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, where you can pick whether you want to have a Telnet win link, which is an internet session, or you can have Pactor, Packet. You can have VARA HF, VARA FM. You know, all the all the sessions, that's why you select them. By the way, the open session here is a button. Most people are confused the first time they use this because they don't realize it's a button and you can click on this. All right, and this is what a message looks like. So let me go back one. You click on the new message button here on top left, and then you get this, enter a new message. And you can enter the two field. If you're sending to another hand, via WinLink, you can just enter KN6DKT, in this case, just the call sign. You don't need to put at WinLink.org, just the call sign is enough. 
you can send to any internet um, email address. In this case, k6oli.net. Write that down if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Um, you can send a message to a cell phone, for example, 626, and you know, this is a made up number. Um, 555-1325 doesn't exist, but you know, just as an example. And that would actually send a text message to a cell phone. And then you can have a subject and then, you know, you can do that. You can select templates and I'll show you live um, how that works because I think that's more fun. And you can of course add CCs. And the important part there is once you mess once you created the message, you need to set it, uh, send it to the outbox. Unlike Gmail, Yahoo, and all the other familiar services you may be familiar with, when you hit the send button, it doesn't send directly because remember, you need to pick a session. You need to tell Winlink how you want to send the message. And that's what makes the Winlink so powerful, right? The other thing I want to mention is the send as. Um, Winlink messages, and this, a lot of people find that confusing at first. When you say it's a Winlink message, then it either goes out via internet or it's destined for a gateway. That's what they mean by Winlink message. If you do a peer-to-peer -peer message, then that's what we did before. You're actually connecting to a specific station and you need to tell the message, your peer-to-peer -peer message, you're not a gateway message. And then you need to connect to a peer to, uh, using a peer-to-peer -peer session for this to go. So there are two things that are peer-to-peer. -peer. And radio only um, is not really used except for a couple of very um, specific use cases. I wouldn't worry about that, uh, all right? Templates, there are tons of templates. I'll show you some more, but um, there's LA County specific forms. Um, most of them are hospital related because we worked really hard on, on making this available because you saw some of the data that we're getting. Um, a lot of the forms have been moved offline because it makes updating really, really difficult and not everybody needs to have all the forms. So really it's only for the large groups that the forms are there for. Um, the entire, not the entire, but a lot of the ICS forms, for those of you who do ICS work with fire departments or any other group that uses ICS forms, most of them are there and I'll show you that in a moment. And they make it really convenient to work with. We kind of think of Winlink in Aries LAX as a incident management tool rather than just an email program because it helps us really manage what it is we're trying to do. And then of course, we've got the USGS, did you feel it? And that's a really powerful tool. That's the one that gets out of the donut hole and tells the world, hey, um, shaking was pretty bad here. The other thing is sessions. You posted your me message to the outbox. It's ready to rock and roll. Now you need to pick a session and tell Winling, how do you want to send this? And Telnet Winlink, and this is what I'll show you tonight, is via internet, but then you can choose packet. You can do Pactor, robust packet. That, that's mostly used in Europe. Um, there's not a lot of use of, of robust packet in the, in the US. RDOP, um, which is good, but VARA HF is better. That's just the way it is. VARA FM, high speed. If you have an Iridium Go link, you can send it via satellite. And then if you want to do a peer-to-peer -peer connection, let's say I want to uh, send the message directly to Bob, AK6RM, then it can go um, packet peer-to-peer -peer or we will pick Bara FM peer-to-peer, -peer. but that's really much um, what's going on there. Um, just keep in mind, the gateway has to support your session. All right, I already covered that. And we mentioned the session, but showtime, that was it. So far, so good. This is the overview. Any questions? Did I totally confuse you? No? Actually, you're, you're still awake. That's a good sign. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me go and bring up my Winlink here and we'll, we'll just go through how you would actually send a message. I think that might be the most interesting. And let me, let me switch over to my other account. And you can have multiple accounts in this case. You can see K6NHI is up there and K6OLI. So we'll use this one. And that's the message interface. Let's just give it a moment here, all right? And you can see this is my work computer because I don't have anything in my inbox. I actually have to back up my messages about every half year because Winlink slows down. The last time I backed up is 3,800 messages on there. <laughs> so I'll just keep that in mind. That's not normal for most people, but then again, I'm not really normal. All right, so I want to start a new message. Pops up this window. 
And you can just type the message here. And Bob, I'm going to pick uh, on you tonight, all right? I hope that's okay. All right, listen to Bob, AK6RM. And let's say I wanted to go through and I'll just show you a couple of iterations of what you could do. And I wanted to, um, let's say CC then NR6V, you know, so it doesn't feel all alone. But remember, I can actually send to any email address too. And I can do, hello everyone. And I can add attachments if I want to. If I add attach photos, I can edit and resize the image to make it smaller so I can actually send it through there. Don't use save as PDF. That's not a good idea to send PDFs ever through WinLink. They're way too large. But you can attach um, pretty much any file you want to. And then you post to Outbox and you're done, right? There you go. Then you pick your session, go to Telnet WinLink, go open session. And this is the important part. And don't worry, we'll go over this a couple of times. Click start. And now it's connecting to a CMS, a common message server. So we're going to the internet, we're going straight up there. And I'm not going to download this. These all should go to my... Actually, let's download KM6TKJs just as a demonstration here. That's M9. And download the check messages. Download the check message. this one and that's it right so we sent one message out bob probably already received it and we received one message so the message window tells us a whole lot about the interchange and that message window looks almost identical on all the sessions so in this case we can tell now highlight this one message sent and the time it took and one message received right but let's say um you want to, let me just close this. Let's say you want to send a template, right? Um, use cases. You can go to select template up there and here are all the standard templates. And that's actually a whole lot of fun. Here are the California state ones. If you're involved with Aries, um, you have all these Aries, we call them LAX here. The Aries LAX bed availability report. I'll just show you what that looks like. And this is what makes this special. We can actually change the hospital service level. We can fill that out. And by the way, as long as I don't click the submit button, usually I would fill this out and then click the submit button and then populates the message. I'm not going to do that. I want to show you a couple of templates before we go on, but you can also save um, availability data, which is great if you're in the field and you're working, I don't know, Baker to Vegas and you just fill in the headers and then update the file as you go. You can load the file up here. Very powerful stuff, right? So let's close this. Let's say another template. Um, Alex, let me ask you, what kind of templates would you usually send if you were going to send this? Uh, probably it would be with Aries. Um, so it, usually it's the hospital drills that uh, okay. I participated in. Okay, well, let me show you. Um, here are the ICS. Um, thank you, Alex. Here are a couple, here are the ICS forms, standard forms. You get the 203, the or organizational assignment. You can have the 205, which is the COM um, plan. And you got the sta standard message. But here's the cool thing. You have it as hospitals too. So you could put, um, Alex, we're going to send this to me. You could pull up the Hicks 213, right? And you can fill in the incident name. You can do all of that. And this is really nice. Shall we just fill this out? W6SD demonstration, just to show you, right? Oops, if I could only type right. There you go. It gives it a message number to, so for you to keep track. And we could send it to K6AUR, or we could do Alex. And yeah, we'll make him. Incident commander, right? From order I, right? Subject testing only. Okay. Here's a cool thing dates very often are filled in, right? So you can just click on it, fill in the date. You can still change it. The word 17th, I could change that. Right? And the time, same thing. It would fill this in. Is it urgent, non urgent, informational, low? Let's say informational. 
This is a test message. And then approved by that usually in is, you know, in my case, Dr. Schadenfreude, that's the character I use for most of my, <laughs> most of my things. And you can save the information if you want to use it for a later um, thing, if you want to just update this. Um, you can reset the form that'll delete everything. And then you can click submit. It'll ask you, um, you know, do you want to? Yes. And then it just gives you that empty page. You can close that page and not worry about it. And here's all the information we just filled in, right? W6SD demonstration, there's Alex's name. And hello. And Hannover Weigert. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> was it, was one willing, let me just show the fun part about left in. Let me see. Where is it hiding? There are too many windows open. There you go. Okay, this is fun. I think I need to move. Ah, it's behind the video. This message had, has not been posted. You want to close anyway? No, we don't want to close. I don't know why it pops this up sometimes. But anyways, this is why. Right. And now we can send it to, I don't know, if you have a club call, by the way, um, set up, you can set up club calls. You could send it to W6SD, but that is your station, right? But in this case, I sent it to K6AUR. Alex, do you have a one link account already? No, well, I wouldn't get to you, right? <laughs> okay, well, we'll pick on Bob again, AK6RM. And then you actually um, post it to Outbox again, right? But let's say in this case, and again, I don't have a radio hooked up, this is my business computer. But in this case, let's say if you wanted to send it via VARA HF, you could pick that and you could open the session. I just want to demonstrate the session and what it looks like. Again, it won't connect because without a radio, that would be tough. And it'll launch VARA, um, it'll launch the TNC and it'll actually give us the option. So at the bottom here of the screen, you can see VARA, right? And probably is channel busy, that's fine. And it actually pops up again behind the video. So let me move this over to this screen. No, there you go. So this is what the VARA window looks like, right? And before you do anything, I probably, if you have internet, I will probably go to the channel selector and probably go update via internet. You could update it in the field via radio, but it is a rather, rather large file. So you need to have a good connection. And it gives you a reliability estimate. I wouldn't take these as the gospel, but a good starting point. So um, try out where you can connect to, right? So as it updates these, you can see you've got 80 meter gateways, you've got 40 meter gateways, you've got 20 meter, and you know, it's just a, a try out what works for you. Um, N0DAJ um, usually works really well for us. Um, he's in Arizona, he's got great 80 meter and 40 meter antennas. Um, KO0000, um, Richard up there, he's got a fantastic um, station. K6SDR has, has great stations. N5TW has the station everybody in, 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 in the whole world is salivating over. Um, if you ever want to check it out on, on QRZ, he actually has a photo of it. It's absolutely brilliant. So, um, but essentially it updates this information for you. And you can select one and you can start transmitting as you go. If you double click on it, AJ7C, it actually fills all the information in here, AJ7C, um, the center frequency, the dial frequency, that's what you set your radio to. And then um, you click start like you did with the internet and it'll do the connection if it's a good connection, right? It'll pass your traffic. That's how easy that is. Um, let's close that. Same demonstration with VARA FM, just to give you an idea here. Oh, that's because I need to start VARA FM. <laughs> I actually do this manually. You can set it up to do it automatically, but you know, not at all much more to do that. So here's my bar FM. Close this again. I'm a bit slow tonight. I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Let's bring Vara FM over so you can see. So I've got Vara FM running. 
We open it up. And they're successfully connected. The same thing applies. You can do the channel selection. You can actually see all the channels that are available. You can update via um, internet. And you can actually see some of them already um, because when you set it up, it you put in your you put in your grid square, and that determines what you see, how far these are away from you. So NR6V for me is farther away than it would be for you, right? But um, he is usually, I can usually reach him, right? And they tell you what the channel width is, is it wide or narrow? And again, the difference isn't all that big. So I wouldn't lose sleep over this. And then again, you can double click on that, right? And you can make your connection, you can click on start. You can also do a digipeter. Vara now has a digipeat um, functionality. And that's really, really powerful if you need to hop one or two stations or you want to get to one of the hybrid gateways. So if I wanted to connect with AJ7C-10 and take advantage of the fact that it can do HF forwarding, that's what I would do. I would use the digipeter. I could go through NRCSV10 or K6YZ F11. And that's how, how that would work. All right. And if you want me to, well, I can show you what that looks like, but let me walk you through the DQ field because just to show you how cool this is. So you go to select template, standard templates, USGS, and you take the, it's available in Spanish and in English. And you bring up the DQ field report. And here's a cool feature about this. One, you can click up here and do the web thing. I don't know why you would even with the internet, but you can do an earth, is this report an exercise or really been, and that's something that doesn't exist on the web version. So in this case, it's an exercise, but if it's a real earthquake, by all means, send it via WinLink goes into the same database, right? So an exercise, did you feel it? That's a required feel. Let's say, yes, we felt it. You can uh, fill in the time. For those of you who remember uh, Northridge and San Fernando earthquakes, you can actually do that back in time. If you did, um, if you did not, submit a report then, which you couldn't because the Did You Feel It program didn't exist, you can still do that and they actually will accept that. Um, put in the right date and the right time and you can actually go back in time and submit what you felt at the time. We actually did that for the San Fernando um, earthquake and people re reported the same thing here. You could change the time, let's say it was at eight o'clock. Click okay. And then you have to fill in your street address because that's how they locate you. And for amateur radio operators, we actually recommend that you also give as a bonus the latitude, long, longitude. And if you have that set up, if you have, the, if you have a GPS dongle set up in WinLink, it'll autofill that for latitude and longitude. And then you can fill all of that out. You don't have to, but you can fill out whatever you want here, right? Uh, this one, you can do multiples. And again, I let you play with this on your own, but this is a whole lot of fun. And you can fill out cool things, you know, send from, W6SD really felt that one, right? Or via Vara HF. There you go. And they actually really appreciate these comments. They said, when we talked with USGS, they said, we didn't expect the comments to be as useful as it turned out. And I said, we were aware that there were people out there doing amateur radio, but we didn't really know what that meant to us. Now we actually have a really good relationship with them. And again, you can submit the report. And this is just, this doesn't have any impact on what you're submitting. This is just a pop-up um, for, uh, for your benefit that you see you're actually submitting something. Click and continue, close this. Again, this isn't a did you feel it um, demonstration, but here are a couple of cool features. You can actually also send it to our friends in Ventura or set up a nice little thing. Did you feel it at vccomm.org? And they'll send you a nice email back saying, hey, we received the report, which USGS doesn't do. It's a one-way street. They just take it straight into the database and analyze it and run their models on it. And you know, those are the dots that pop up um, in, the, in, the, in the shape map, right? Or you could send to test on WinLink just to get a feedback. So if you ever want to just try it and you're not sure, send it to test and it'll tell you whether it was received, right? And here's the information. And the cool thing about this is one, you cannot make any changes. If you messed up, you just close it, don't save it and um, start over. But it actually puts in your call sign at the bottom there. And that tells USGS it's coming from an amateur radio operator. So you're putting your good name to this report. 
That's a big difference from a lot of the other reports they're getting because they're anonymous. Tells them it's a call sign, that tells them it's an amateur radio thing, and it gives them some extra information. And all the information we filled in is available right here. Very cool stuff. So then you post this to Outbox, do it back as an internet message, we click open session, and we click start. And we can send this. And that's as easy as it's easy as one, two, three. And we don't want to download any of this stuff. We downloaded one message. I'll just show you one quick thing about what you can do with received messages, right? And you saw we just sent two messages. They're gone from our outbox. You can find them again in your sent items. All right. Inbox. Don't I have something in the inbox? Oh, it's in the right items. All right. If you have messages, there you go. KM6TKJ actually sent me a message, right? This was an exercise we did this week and he decided to send it via gateway. If you have a little bit, uh, if you have a little paper click here, it tells you the file has an attachment that has not been opened or viewed. So you can click on this icon and it can open the attachment. You can also click on the attachments up here and it actually shows you the attachment. In this case, he sent me a, Excel sheet, right? And I can click open view on this directly. I can see the size, 16 kilobytes. I can click on open view and that should, with any luck, um, pop up my, that is again on the other screen. <laughs> I'll just bring it over. That pops up the Excel spreadsheet that he sent to me. And I can close this and I can manipulate that. I can respond to his message and can tell him I received your message, right? So there are a whole lot of really, really cool options available here. Here is a spreadsheet that he sent. It's again, Alex, this is a Hicks 251 facility system report for which there's no form on Wendley, but this is a spreadsheet that people filled out. And you can see partially functional, not working. They, filled out the departments here. So there's a lot of options here. Pretty much in the exercise, none of the um, communications equipment was working. So that's what they're reflecting here. And that's a pretty powerful tool to actually send that information. And hey, independent of which organization you work with, tell me it wouldn't be useful to actually have email when nobody else has this. How many of you think it would be really, really useful to have email available when nobody else does, when the internet has failed? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we all live in a hyper digitized world and I'll move you over here. Um, let me stop my share and take questions. We, we all live in a hyper digital world. Not having email is unthinkable for most of us. And think about it, start with yourself and your families. You want to make sure your families have this. I gave this presentation about two, three years back and I had an older gentleman come up to me. He's like, oh, I don't need that digital malarkey. And I just happened to know some of his background. And I said, well, that, you don't have to, we don't force digital on anybody, <laughs> quite contrary, you know, you do it or not. I just hope that, and his wife was going undergoing cancer treatment at, at the time. I said, I hope that the ham assigned to your wife's hospital doesn't feel the same way because if he messes up the medications, two weeks later, I get an email on Winlink saying, hey, I got this worker, this was super easy. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, so it's just understand, this isn't something that we look at as, as something that is benefiting us in any way. It's benefiting you as the operator, it benefits your families, making sure you can communicate, you can keep each other safe. And let me tell you, um, Nancy Kate MBD, who I'm showed the uh, picture of earlier, she, every exercise, she sends a message, uh, I'm well message to all her kids, uh, the one living on the East Coast and the one living in Tehachapi. And that gives her a great sense of confidence. And she uses the network to get these messages out. And she's really happy about this. And we have a lot of operators who feel that way. It's really comforting knowing that the network is there. Understand that gateways are either MCOM or public. Public gateways you can use whenever you want to, pretty much the, the public people know that um, they, they set that up. The MCOM gateways, by and large, most people don't have a problem with you connecting to, unless it's for an organized event, then please contact the, the sysops. That's good, that's good behavior. And during a major emergency, they're probably going to be um, pretty busy with a 
agency or the, the group that is moving traffic there. Um, one of the things that you can always do with amateur radio operators is talk with them. Now, I don't want to give a big shout out to Dan, NR6V, and, and, and people like him, because they put in their own time, effort, their own money. They make this really, really, really robust. And, you know, if you can do anything to, to support them, learning about WinLink, learning how to treat their equipment properly, um, not sending messages that are too long and things like that, that is respectful of their gateways, that would really, really help. 